Sibwell presents Around the Table with E and the Fat Man. What's up, everybody? It's me, it's me, it's the B.O.B., and I'm here with my man, E.E. How are you doing today? I'm doing all right, Bob. It's been kind of a big, weird week in some world world. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and boy, it's some, things to t- some things to talk about today on this episode. Yeah, well, this is Around the Table with E and the Fat Man. That is E, I am the Fat Man, and this is where we talk about pretty much whatever we want. Mostly sports related, mm-hmm. sometimes some mm-hmm. pop culture, because Eric loves his pop culture. <laughs> I do. <laughs> so I guess if you want to jump start it, I personally, I, I don't believe in giving these types of, I'm trying to think of the best way to say it. <laughs> uh, I don't like airtime publicity. I don't, I don't like to give these types of people publicity or airtime. I don't want to say these types of people. <laughs> um, <laughs> But I guess we can we can chalk we can knock off uh, Mikey Williams on our avoided. talk list real quick. Yeah, yeah we'll knock, so, it can't be avoided. So Mikey Williams, big brain move, uh, decided that <laughs> he was going to allegedly he got into a play, allegedly he, got, he allegedly he got into an argument at a at a house. I think it was his, and kicked five people out of the house, and decided while they were driving away that he was going to shoot at them. Um, that was, that was a great, uh, great move on his part. Pretty much most likely in this day and age, uh, most likely threw his career away before it really got started. (laughs) (laughs) Well, America does love to give people a second chance and to see if there's a second act within them and maybe Mikey comes back. But, um, I mean, it is very easy for something like this to just, you know, completely derail you, um, promising career and could go in a completely different direction pretty quickly. Uh, there was an old running back uh, for Nebraska back in the day named Lawrence Phillips, uh, who should have been great. Uh, go Google him, kids, if you want to learn about what happened to Lawrence. But uh, anyway, I'm hoping Mikey is not on the same road here. And currently it all is alleged, we should say that. But yeah, felony charges, uh, felony assault, and felony gun charges, not not a good look. Um and not good for SimWorld, quite frankly. Um, Mikey is out. Mikey is not expected to uh, have any real way back in, I don't think. And for a Best Coast Ballers squad uh, that was actually playing really well, um, yeah. you know, Best Coast in that brutal Pacific Rim division with Bay Area and Showtime, they were in a, in a surprising uh, Asia Pacific team. They were hanging right in there at six and three. Yeah. Um, and look, maybe, maybe they will come out of this. Okay. I mean, obviously you've still got, still got some talent on that roster. Most, most notably in the person of, uh, Lace Darius outlaw, but boy, you know, I, I don't, I don't know if there was a better backcourt, uh, in all of some world hoops than the LDO yeah. Mikey backcourt. It was a lot of fun to watch. I enjoyed calling his games, enjoyed watching their games for when they had him. Um, you know, we could talk about who's got to step up and what sort of happens for best coast now. But the truth is, is you don't replace a player like that. Yeah. Um, you know, and it's going to be really interesting to see what becomes of best coast for the rest of this year. Good luck to coach Aaron Murray, but, uh, that's a massive loss. Yeah. So I will, uh, I will just add that it's going to be really hard to replace a quarter of your offense. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. Um, so we, it is. yeah, we will see because they were the third, third highest scoring offense in the league and they're going to lose. They just lost their top score. Uh, he mm-hmm. was their top score. I think he was averaging a little over 17 points a game or so might have been averaging a little bit more, but uh, now it's, it's kind of like last season. I would say it's all up to least areas outlaw now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I would have to say that you were probably correct about that. And again, you know, look, if nothing else, what I will say is, uh, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to seeing how this team reacts to this. It's going to be a very different squad. They have to adjust this thing on the fly. <laughs> um, and not going to be easy. Uh, and good luck to them. But uh Unfortunate, unfortunate situation all around. Mikey Williams, uh, wish it hadn't ended up this way, but here we are. And yeah, 
That's 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 about it. But hey, let's move on to a slightly more pleasant topic. Well, for for half of this, which is um, you know <laughs> the surging originators behind Coach Alyssa Dodge, who we saw turn in a good performance uh, on the bench last year, seemingly doing it again, has the originators on a tear. Um, and you know, I think it's kind of got everybody asking: Are these guys, you know? Or is this a team of destiny in in, in sim world hoops? Uh, and if they are, you know, I think they're kind of maybe taking that crown or passing the baton. You you reach for your metaphor and stick it in there. Um, Showtime, you know, before the start of the season, everybody was talking up Showtime, and of course the James brothers and Corey Yams looking tough in the paint. But Showtime has struggled lately. The originators on an absolute roll. Um, what do you think? Are we sort of seeing a, is, is it a torch being passed here, Bob? Are, you know, Showtime kind of not living up to expectations and the originators rising above on this six win streak that they're on? Well, what I think we're seeing is what I wanted to see from Showtime is to begin this season, who were the originators? It was yeah. the DJ Wagner show. That was the only thing anybody cared about. Who were the sh- who was Showtime before the season? Bronny James and loud loudmouth Coach Chad Smith. <laughs> <laughs> but what I think we have seen uh, at this point in the season is that the originators are not just DJ Wagner. Uh, other players have stepped up on that team. Um, I did not expect them to be the offensive juggernaut that they have been, but I believe at this point in the season. I think they're number one when it comes to scoring in the game. Uh, but if you yeah, look at their, that's correct. if you look at their stats across the board, I don't know if there is, and I'm talking about like points, rebounds, assists. Like if you if you take their entire all their stats, I don't know if there's a better team right now. Um, yeah. Outside of free throw attempts, which we know <laughs> fouls, fouls are fouls are subjective, and they're not. They are. <laughs> they're not really getting to the line. The, the one turnovers force per game, um, actually, no, I'm sorry, turnovers per game, they're 21st, and three-point percentage against uh, opponents' three-point percentage, they're 22nd, and forced turnovers per game, they're 16th. Uh, the three-point percentage is probably the only one that I'm really concerned about. Um, they need to figure out how to slow down uh, opponents in the three point, uh, at the three-point line, but they're still giving up the second least amount of points per game. <laughs> so yeah. they're yeah. doing it. They're averaging the most points per game. They're averaging with opponents the second least amount of points per game. Least, uh, I was going to say least Darius Outlaw since we were just talking about best coast. <laughs> yeah. Darius Loftus, formerly of Gotham 5, uh, mm-hmm. he is turning out to be a huge pickup for them. I mean, he just yeah. put up four. Who expected, of all players on the originators, who expected... Kadarius Loftus to be the player that scored 43 points for them. <laughs> yeah, he he's the emerging, you know, he is Robin to Batman there, right? He has yeah. emerged really as the second force and second star. And he's, you know, give him a lot of credit. He deserves it. Uh, you know, right, got got shuffled off the team, had to find a new home, and uh, look at him rising and thriving. Yeah, I, I think what we have seen as well is DJ Wagner really turning into also a facilitator for this team. Uh, he has he has the second most uh, points per game and with twenty two point four, but he's also sixth in assists in the league, uh, and that's mm-hmm. what you wanted from a player like DJ Wagner. That is as good as DJ Wagner is. He wasn't just a scorer, um, but we wanted to see how he played well with his teammates, and he is doing. He's not forcing anything at this point, um, which is what you come to expect from superstars. Is there they start especially at the high school level. It's usually, I'm going to get mine. It's me, me, me. Um, <laughs> yeah. And yeah. At, at this point, he's really, he's spreading the ball around. I mean, the, their in, inside presence uh, with their with Tyron Snyder and Victoria Silgowskis. I, I don't know if there's a better, I don't know if there's a better inter, in, I can't speak again today, per hey. usual, hey. interior <laughs> defensive team <laughs> than the originators. <laughs> You don't want yeah. to go. You do not want to end up on the inside. And I think that's probably why their three point percentage of their opponent's three point percentage is so high is because teams, they, they 
can't they can't go inside. Can't what, get inside anyway can't. and can't work that, there. Yeah. Il, Ilgauskas is averaging the second most blocks per game. Uh, Tyron Snyder's gone down a little bit. He's at five blocks per or the number five blocks per game. So uh, there I think they might be all around right now. They're playing the best team ball. But yep. I know and that's obviously they're on their six game winning streak, but you still obviously yeah. Uh, you have to worry about Bay Area Breakers. Uh, Lone Star Basketball Club is still seven and one. They just had their first loss. They're still the number one team, um, at least right now in the power rankings. So I, there are a couple of teams, and Gotham Five's gone on a little bit of a three game tear. They Ill- have. Philadelphia is on a three game tear, <laughs> which is not <laughs> yep. something we expected to see from them with the way they played to begin the season. But I think Coach Dries has really turned that team around. Yeah. No, look, I think uh, uh, originators and you just kind of touched on all other high points there, um, you know, deserve that kind of front runner status, which I think we're officially giving them now on the show today. Um, completely deserve it. And, you know, and DJ Wagner has been, uh, you know, again, credit to Darius Loftus, who we were just talking about, but DJ has been everything that he's been advertised. Yeah. Um, and I won't dwell too much on originators. In fact, I won't dwell too much on the negative side of this either. But the way we kind of set this up is originators rising, maybe Showtime falling a little bit. And lately they have a three-game losing streak. Well, they won their most recent game, but they did lose three in a row. The interesting thing I wanted to point out here is, you know, I, I think Showtime, you know, Showtime has clearly been revealed, exposed to have some weaknesses, to have some issues. But they're not James related. I'll tell you that much. Um, <laughs> Bronny and, and Bryce. Bryce has been great too. Both of those kids have been, you know, really, really good uh, all year long for Showtime, and you know, expect that to continue. But it, it's really been the supporting cast. Um, you know, there's there's not been uh, a, a real sort of you know interior paint kind of presence. Uh, you know, Corey Yams averaging about five points, about six rebounds a game. He's decent, um, but hasn't really been amazing, quite frankly, uh, particularly over the last few games. Ethan Letterman, I expected so much more from him. Yeah. Um, you know, shooting around 40% overall and from deep, about five points a game. Uh, Juka G, I thought he was going to maybe be, you know, an assist machine down there. And he's averaging 3.2 assists and he's scoring 6.6 a game. But he's shooting under 30% from the field, 22% from deep. Um, you know, it, it's just been the supporting cast. Um, team of Jameses <laughs> would, would dominate the <laughs> world hoops, uh, but they got to find at least three other guys to get out there with those two um, yeah. and, and find some combinations and some things that I work, uh, those things work a little bit better, I think, or else, you know, I, I think that Showtime could legit be in trouble. I think, you know, they're about a 500 team right now, and that doesn't feel unfair to me, <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. um, they're about a 500 team and yeah, loads of time left to correct that. Um, and they're still, you know, they're still in the fight there in that Pacific division, but, uh, we will, we will see Well, we've been talking, Bob, about, you know, putting the originators in that, uh, you know, some world hoops rush more the, the top four, the top five, the best in class at this point, do you think there's anybody better? than Beasts of the East. They are SimWorld's first and currently only team to reach eight wins. They're eight and two. And the thing I want to talk about them is it seems like they're getting it done with no big stars. You know, we talk about the originators. We know who we're talking about. We're talking about DJ. Talk about the James Brothers. It's showtime. Who are we talking about? <laughs> we're talking about Beasts of the East. You know, off your head, tell me tell me three the three best Beast players. <laughs> you know, I think that's a challenge for most people. I, uh, you know, let, you let and me, I let me give it a try. Okay, fa, looking on the screen, Fa, Reed, and Redmond, <laughs> and Redmond. Yeah, <laughs> he is the one guy. But look, Free Redmond, who is their biggest star. I don't even think he's. You know, where people talk about him. If I go to the Discord right now, are there going to be conversations talking about, oh my God, Fareed Redmond? Let's be honest, Fareed Redmond's one true viral highlight moment of this <laughs> season so far is when he got explosively dunked on and left laying on the floor, just helplessly waving his arms. Um, I, think, I think I've seen his body, his his spiritual essence, his, if you will, floating above him. <laughs> yeah, that's right. But... 
Dude's averaging 16, 16 and a half a game for the best record, you know, in all of Simmer. I mean, look, I'll put it out this way. Fareed Redman, Caden Ship, Simworld veteran, really good too. We know him. Uh, you know, Tony Christopher Fuller, TC Fuller. Who do you got here? Elijah Hawkins. Nobody's talking about Elijah Hawkins. <sighs> You know, this is this is a team hey, on, of low you bring profile. Up, where'd you bring huh. up Caden Ship at? You Caden said Ship. you said Caden Ship. Caden oh, right. Ship's what am I? Sorry. Caden right. Ship's in Bay Area. See, I, so, you're right. you're so you right. think so? You're what well, you've already answered your own question. You asked, "Is there anybody right. better than Beasts?" And clearly, <laughs> you think <laughs> Bay Area is better than the Beasts. No, no, no. Excuse me. I threw Caden Ship on there. I was looking at the wrong thing. I was actually looking at Levin Cutler, who is the third leading scorer on that team at uh, twelve point nine. But apologies for that. Look, but this is my point: is like Beast is a bunch of like random parts. I feel like <laughs> you know, it's it's who are the beasts? You don't know. Uh, Jojo Kearney. I mean, it's like. You know, look, hey, the thing of it is, is that I'm impressed. They are really getting it done. They are a team really that is loaded with offensive creators. Yeah. Um, you know, they they distribute the ball well, they pass well, they get good shots, they make shots. Uh, they deserve their eight and one ranking. They are for real. Um, and maybe Fareed Redman is for real too. Maybe he should start entering the conversation when we talk about some of these elite level players in the Sim World game. Yeah, and I think uh one of the players Fareed Redmond is like 80% of the reason that the beasts are where they are at right now. But for me, a surprise player, because I expected pretty much nothing from him is Eric Busk. Um, I think his play right now is another part of the reason that the beasts are doing as well. He's been a, he's been a great facilitator for this team. He's also been a decent three point shooter for them. Um, it just mm-hmm. There's a bunch of things about him that just, I was, again, not expecting anything from him. He's been a big surprise for me. I'm not going to say yeah. he's the second yes. best player like talent-wise on this team, but he is probably the second best player on the team right now because he can do all the little things right. He he can, and he's actually, you know, part of the reason why you didn't expect anything from him, didn't rate him coming into the season is because you watched him last year. Yeah. He's a Sim World veteran, and we thought he was going to be good. We thought he was going to be important last year, and he just kind of disappointed. Yep. And this year... He's playing like the player that we thought we were going to get. Um, and, yeah, it's it's making a big, big contribution as well. Uh, hey, you know, beasts. And until, <laughs> until somebody, like, you know, consistently starts to beat these guys, until they start to stumble, <laughs> uh, it's hard. You certainly couldn't argue with anybody that doesn't want to rank them as the number one team in SimWorld mm-hmm. right now. Yeah, well, you know, we've talked about a lot of uh, good things. I guess yeah. actually, I guess we we started with the a bad thing. A little, yeah, a little then sad, talked, a little, then, little then softer. Then we softer. Yeah, then we packed our sandwich full of a lot of good things. <laughs> We're doing the opposite of a compliment sandwich here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about the premiere game tomorrow night. Sim World TV. <laughs> Oceana. <laughs> Oceana versus the AT Aliens. Yeah, yeah, you circled that one on your lineup card a while ago, didn't you? Absolutely. Uh, well, hey, here's the thing: is SimWorld back in action tomorrow night? Games coming back on Monday, and yes, we have one game on air. And uh, as luck would have it, <laughs> it is SimWorld <laughs> Oceania hosting the ET Aliens. Um, hey, I will say this: uh, we're going to be at Oceania, so that should be fun um, to uh, be out there on their on their home court. Um, should be entertaining, so just might want to tune in to watch a little bit of that. But all right, look, fine. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna try to pull the wool over anybody's eyes here. I think we all know the deal. ET Aliens two and six. Uh, Similar to Oceania, one and seven. But I will tell you what, <laughs> both of these teams are on one game winning streaks. There it is. <laughs> they won their most recent games. For Oceania, their first and only win of the year so far. Uh, so, Bob, I will I will come to you first between this uh, battle of, let's call them rising, let's call them streaking cellar dwellers, <laughs> Oceania and AT Aliens. Who do you got going into tomorrow night? Well, first, let me apologize because I always struggle with their name. It is the AT Aliens, and I always mm-hmm. say AT Aliens, so I apologize to the team. <laughs> you know, I, it's hard. It's hard for me because 
the AT aliens did it again. AT aliens. <laughs> uh, they they have some they have some dogs on that team. I mean, they they it's AT, I think AT aliens are going to win it. Who who does Oceana have? Um, they for some reason have not yeah, been able I'm... to really put together. Uh, Richard Hennessy outside of Cool Web. No, Cool Web is a good player. Yeah. Cool uh, Web's a great player. I like. He cool is Web. a very good player. Yeah, great player. Uh, Richard Hennessy at seven foot two seventy five. <laughs> he just has he, not been the player that I have expected him to be yet. Hey, all the same, six point five points, eight rebounds yeah. a game from a sixteen year old kid who you know clearly doesn't know the game that well True. at this point, and he's almost averaging three blocks a game. You know, Hennessy does his thing, but but look, you're right. Um, nobody else kind of like rising quite to that Cole Webb level for Oceania <laughs> yet, and that's what this team needs. You know, Cole Webb is basically doing his uh, his Brian his, his you know his Brian Webb impersonation um out there but uh you know there it's not so much been richard hennessy disappointing me it, it's actually been a few other guys who i expected to be better um you know i certainly expected travian abbas just 15 years old but super skilled averaging seven points a game I, I thought he'd be more like that super sub in off the bench willie weasel um you know talented player i don't know why he's only averaging three points a game it's not because he's not shooting well it's just they don't run the ball through him i don't know Oceania has some things to work out. I'm with you on this one as well, Bob. I, I think I got to go the other way. I got to go with ATL. Um, again, not a <laughs> not a perfect team. Yeah. Um, obviously <laughs> not. But I do like the combination of, uh, of of what you got out there in terms of the Demario Duvall um, and Malachi Booth. You know what the funny thing is is both of these guys have shot poorly to start the season. If you get those, you get them a little bit more efficiency with uh, with what's going on with ATL. Um, you know, I, I think that they can improve, and I'm also looking forward to seeing Atlanta's new player, John Stilt, uh, yep. six foot six, sixteen year old. Throw him into the mix. I think that they have upside down there in Georgia. So uh, I'm going with the AT Aliens as well. How how big do you think the how how big do you think the difference is going to be? Oh, if I had to give a point spread on this, well, keep in mind, uh, we're on the road here. They are going to have to travel, and that's going to make a difference. But uh, at the end of the day, I'm giving it to AT Aliens by five. Plus uh, five. All right. Minus five, I guess it would be. All right. <laughs> I'm going to go minus 15. <laughs> oh, you're expecting a bigger one. All right. Uh, you know, well, hey, it, remember? It, it, go, oh, go ahead. ahead. I was just going to say, it's it's hard because Oceana is just, they're not they're not scoring at all this year. They're 31st in the league. And yeah. a AT Aliens are not doing that much better, but I think that they just have a little bit more talent on their side where yep. I think it's going to be a 15-point win. The potential is definitely there for them. The potential is absolutely there. And if you want to watch it, I want to remind everybody, that is going to be on tomorrow night, Monday night, 7 o'clock mm. Eastern Time, SimWorld TV, Oceania, AT Aliens, and we've got more SimWorld hoops coming up Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, even on the weekend. Next Saturday, we're going to see Gulf Coast and Yacht Club. So uh, lots to pay attention to this week. Hopefully, Bob, we won't get any more of these uh, dramatic uh, police report related <laughs> stories to have to talk over with folks. I but, hope not. Uh, but, you know, that's the week that was. This is the show that was around the table, and I enjoyed doing it with you, as I always do, Mr. Bob. God, I enjoyed doing it with you. I appreciate you. I appreciate everybody listening. I hope everybody has a great rest of their – great west. Great rest of their <laughs> weekend. If you're in the west or east, I don't care there either you place I, you I, are. I don't care where great. you are. <laughs> <laughs> Later, folks.